I mean, I can't come over to sunny South Africa <laughs> and not meet the world famous Blanton. So, you know, it was, a, it was a big deal. And I had talked to Anna and she said, you know, she let me know you all do a lot. So the potential could be that we miss each other. So I understood. But it was really to thank you all in person for, you know, helping bridge the, the gap. All right, because, guys, okay. welcome back to the world famous the real South Africa. My name is Mark and Latasha is going to be inside with us. And we're having an interview with Chris, his first time in South Africa. He absolutely had a great time. He just wanted to tell everybody his story. So I think you guys should follow, listen, and maybe take his advice, but check us out on the inside. All right, everybody, this is Mark Blanton from The Real South Africa, and of course we have over Dr. here. Natasha Blanton, The Real South Africa. And guys, as you know, we do a lot of tourism. We do it big. Um, we bring a lot of Americans, um, and of course, those in the diaspora. We got those from the UK that are coming. We got people from the Caribbean that comes here uh, through The Real South Africa. We try to show them a good experience, but we be, um, but yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let this gentleman to my right introduce himself Hopefully he'll give himself a, a nice introduction. Let's, let's, let's see what we got. <laughs> hey, maybe a little. <laughs> How y'all doing? I'm Chris Mason. I'm from Washington, D.C. Um, this is my first international trip, and I took it with the Real South Africa because the channel, everything they talk about, everything they show them really, you know, opened my eyes to the reality of traveling to Africa. It wasn't just an ideal. You know, you all made it real. You know, and it, and it convinced me and helped influence me to make this leap take this journey and I've been here since the 9th. Today's the 18th. It's up there, yeah. Yeah, and I've been loving it. You know, I've already said it. But you've been in Joburg the whole time. I've been in Joburg the whole time and I go to Cape Town tomorrow for the last back end of the trip. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Tasha, why are we sitting up in here with with this, with with, with Mr. Mason here? We're sitting here because um, I was looking in the chat book between you and Anna. I obviously monitor everything and then just when you were having such a good a good time and then um you were at the sand deck the other night having yes. dinner and yes. you wanted to get picked up early so i chimed in because i know anna was love chatting um and i said uh you know just the driver's going to be there in 10 minutes you know in case maybe this one will pick you up and then you said is it, I, I i know you guys are busy yeah, I, I, I know right. i know you're busy but it's there, am I gonna get to see you before? Right. And I said, and he goes, I got a day off. And I said, we will make a plan and we will come, we will come out to see you. So um, that's why we're here because you seemed eager that you really want to tell, meet us in person. So we appreciate that because we a lot of people we don't actually get to see um, for a number of reasons, but um, we made it a point to uh, get out here to see you because you expressed such a, such a bold interest. And why was that? I mean, I can't come over to sunny South Africa <laughs> and not meet the world famous Blanton. So, you know, it was a it was a big deal. And I had talked to Anna, and she said, you know, she let me know you all do a lot, so the potential could be that we miss each other. So I understood, but it was really to thank you all in person for you know helping bridge the the gap, you okay. know, and getting a real understanding of what this place like because it's not just you know people living in huts and walking around and you know grass for clothing and lions roaming the streets yeah. you know um, all that stuff that you hear the narratives about uh, you all have been doing great work for i think it's about five years i've been seeing your channel yeah, two, been, so, up there below, huh? yeah. yeah so it, it was just out of respect i was raised if i got the chance to sit with you all thank you i want to do that so Excited, so. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we, we, you know, I'm, obviously that's our intention. You know, we don't want to preach to people about, you know, coming to Africa. We just want people to see what we see. You know, and we do see a lot, and so we kind of, you know, present it in a in a manner in which, you know, you can grasp and you can see yourself doing. And once you get here, then you have your experience. Right. Right. right? And so right. you're having your experience. So Tasha was talking to you about the sand deck. How was, how was, what was going on up there? Was it okay? Oh, uh, it was more than okay. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was beautiful. And one thing I say not to shift it away sure, from sure, that, sure. but the restaurants in general here are, are just A1, like top notch. Like seriously, like no disrespect. I've been to Vegas. I've been to, you know, from DC. Yeah. I've been to LA, been to San Diego. A lot of quote unquote top line places. This beats all of us. 
you know, and the service you get is, is top of the line and they don't, you know, treat anybody differently. Everybody gets equal top quality service everywhere you go and the food is, is amazing and the atmosphere is always good too. So, okay. so that's that's been the, the, the main thing that I've you know noticed from every spot that I've been to. Okay, so now if you was comparing the spots to somewhere in DC or Atlanta, what would you what would you compare it to? Well DC it'd probably be specific um, Melrose would be more like a Georgetown, yeah. which is, yeah, I would say that's probably the closest it would be. Um, and that's what they told you. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's what yeah, exactly. Georgetown is like, it's yeah. your pinky up when you drink your... Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's not as clean and, and it definitely don't cost the same. So, yeah, yeah. Um, South Africa has a beam on both of those fronts. And then everybody there, know, you know, I ain't trying to cause no trouble on your channel. <laughs> everybody there look like me. Yeah. You know, and that meant a lot to me, you know, because I knew, you know, who the money's going to, mm -hmm. you know, that 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 has value, you know. Yeah. Um, and it was part of the reason when I moved from DC to Atlanta is because I know we were there. And, right. and I feel good around us. Yeah. And really it's scarce in the US where you get them places. Yeah, you know, know, it's, um, they're getting harder and harder to find, especially yeah. though, you because you street corridor. Oh yeah. When, you, when I got there DC in 02, you know, I ain't know nothing about DC. Actually, I was scared of DC. Uh, I was, because yeah. I'm from North Carolina. Okay. Uh, I was in the Army at the time. I just got out, I joined the service. And so I was living in Virginia. So I would drive across the bridge, go to work. And as soon as I got off work, I can't. I went back across the bridge into Virginia and never mm -hmm. even went to DC. I was a little nervous. So, but eventually I started going out in DC and I was going to the U Street corridor. Right. And I'm like, man, this is a little heaven right here. It's, nice. <laughs> yeah, and it's popping always. It's yeah. Not, it's not yeah. Um, but I did that a lot growing up, and I yeah. still think I give South Africa the edge. So. Dang. Okay. Um, okay. Because I did U Street, Abbott's Morgan, and yeah. yeah, that was what you said Georgetown. Yeah. Now 14th Street with all the different lounges, K Street, H mm -hmm. Street, everything. Um, all the alphabet streets. Exactly. Yeah. All, okay. all of them that, that exist, yeah. Um, and DC has its swag, you know, I'm a yeah. proud DC, you know, native. So um, home and the people there are always going to hold value. But when I just compare the experiences, I can get all those things in South Africa, but then all the other things I can't get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not to mention the safaris, the scenery. Uh, it's just it's just so much that I couldn't imagine experiencing, you know, just being here for the short amount of time I've actually been here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah th it doesn't take take long to connect because like, even going to Atlanta, unless you know a bunch of people, it it takes a while to connect yeah. with people to find out what's going on. But right. it didn't take you no time to figure it out here. No, it, it didn't. Everybody, every driver is really knowledgeable. Even people who just, one thing that I thought was profound, I've been telling my family, I got here Tuesday night. Wednesday, I went to Mill Rose Arc down, down in that area. And I was walking and the guy asked me um, about where's the ATM? Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not sure, you know, but once I started talking, he's like, oh, you're not from here. I said, yeah. no, I'm from the US. And he said, essentially, welcome to my country. And I said, thanks for having me. But he said, this is your country too. Wow. And that's the first day I went around. You're like, yeah, hey, that's an introduction. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, I ain't been a, you know, welcome to my state. I ain't never been to the US. You know, okay. um, not saying it ain't people like that, but the fact that he made it a point to say that, yeah. it means something to him too. Yeah. You know, so they're happy that you're here. Yeah. And, and that's what I've been getting the whole time. Men, women, you know, it's, it's been equally um, that type of energy. Like you said, yeah, <laughs> I think what happens is a good too. word. There's right. really no other word for it. Yeah. We can call it vibe, you can call it whatever. But I, I think that when we get here, our vocabulary becomes limited because there's so many things that we're feeling, so many things that we're seeing that you can't actually think of all the words that actually express what it is you actually right. feel. So when you say that was a type of energy. It's mm -hmm. like that's the only word we can come up with right. that describes yeah. what it is we actually feel. Yeah. It's funny you say that about the like the language and our English. Our English language is very limited to yeah. what we can actually express. Yeah. So sometimes, like we'll be here and we'll be talking to South Africans, and they'll be speaking to us in English, but to fully express what they're saying, they 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 meander off into their to their native language. Because that makes them say, "Cause this is what I mean," gotcha. yeah. and then they have to tell us what that word means. And they try to explain it. Yeah, because yeah. it may not exist 
and that exactly. wave for us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, I got you. Yeah, and they know the, the English language just as well as we do for the most part. They have a different version of it, but they do. But they always have that, have their language ready to express to each other, you know, certain things. And then when they try to, they, because I've been so, so long, they're trying to tell me things and they say, Mark, uh, and then they just go into <laughs> something. Yeah. And, 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 and they yeah. really do go, ah, yeah. 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 because I'm really trying to find the But in short, but, but in the short they, they're they super excited to have us here. Yeah. You know, you've been watching that channel for a while. And, um, you know, for somebody to greet you who we were told, obviously, you know, hey, Africans don't like Americans. And we've heard all these things walking around in, in, in the U.S. And they come here and somebody greet you that way and make you feel some kind of way, you know, it's to me it's very interesting. Yeah, it is. And there's been a couple of things that staff and different people I've interacted with. It's like, well, if you didn't start talking, I would maybe I wouldn't have known you weren't from South Africa, but I thought you were from Africa. And yeah. I, and that was fascinating. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, you know, because what my view is being an American, mm -hmm. you know, you don't go to you know, Cali and say, oh, that's a California black person. You know what I'm saying? You, know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, would, you wouldn't know unless they talked or they swag or maybe they dress different. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for them to go, you know, I would have thought you maybe were from this country, this country, because of features or certain mm -hmm. things like that. It kind of gives you that sense of like, oh, they they kind of know me better than me on that level. You know, they about know you're historically happy. about where you really mm -hmm. from. So, yeah. yeah, that was, that was cool. I thought that was fascinating. But I was interested in what you just said. They know you better than you know you yeah. in some ways because they know where you come from. Exactly. Even though you you know you think you know, which is basically what our history tells us. Right. Right. But they intrinsically know where we come from, right. and they acknowledging you, you know, versus even walking around the U.S. We don't even acknowledge ourselves. Right exactly. And, and wow. I've talked about that a lot with people. What is that? I might be saying the wrong. What is? Shop, shop, shop. Yeah, shop, shop. Is that like, thank you? Well, it's, uh, like, it's, it's, it seems it's, like it means a lot of things. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It means so many things. Yeah, right, cool. um, yeah so. And, and, and you don't hear it everywhere. You don't hear it throughout right. the whole entire country. And you know, country. like, okay. you just use the word, all right, cool. Then yeah, they'll okay. just say shop, shop. Yeah, it's like sharp, sharp. Like, but the shop, R, shop, it yeah. ends up with, ah, uh, so it's like shop, shop. Ah, yeah. Okay. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm now you'll go yeah. back and start saying it. They're like, yeah. I'm Mayan Holland. like, all right, shut up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I had everybody back home saying that. <laughs> yeah, and they should. These yeah. things will adopt a new word. Right. Right. Get ready. My friend, I was talking to her, and she said, uh, you know, how was your day talking about yesterday? Yeah. I said, uh, it was cool, but today, you know, I had a free day just to kind of roam around Joe Bird myself. She said, oh, you already using slang. I was like, mm -hmm. Because Joe Bird did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was roaming yeah. around Johannesburg. No, I was a Joe Bird. Yeah. So, I was a Joe Bird. So, yeah. It's, it's but you get comfortable yeah. quick, don't you? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Too quick. Because you don't have to adjust to the factor of what are these people looking at me like. You know, mm -hmm. I, if I just, if you just put us all in the lineup, you would know who's from Wait, America, who's from here, you know? So maybe if you had that type of eye. But to the outsiders, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the real tourists, yeah. the real foreigners, they have no clue. They are the real minority, you know, and I think uh, experiencing that is a whole different degree. Because one thing about DC and Atlanta, that's the uh, minority, but you're in the majority, so you get a different view. Growing up in DC, I thought black people were in every state, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was like yeah. Chocolate City, you know, yeah. it's like this all I like, saw. Go to Montana, it's right. right. Exactly. <laughs> But here it's like I've met people from Mozambique, Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. Namibia. Yeah. Still, I wouldn't have been able to know that if they didn't share it with me. Right. You know, so that's been, like you said, that comfortability that relaxed the shoulders a bit. Yeah. I don't, I don't get the vibe that somebody's looking at me like they sizing me up or something like that. You know, um, and you know, I don't have to worry about the police. Either. You know, the police. I've had conversations. With so yeah. Okay. So just just another brother. Just yeah, just job. doing his job. You know whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not that underlining you know hidden pressure. Mm -hmm. what, what what is this going to turn into? Yeah. yeah. What's in your pockets? Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. No, I brought you. Yeah. Ooh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. That is, it's good that you have that. You know, to me, you know, somebody who just who just got here, but obviously awake and awoke and know what's going on and. Know, know where you come from and know the precautions you got to take everywhere you go. And then you've been on a, you've been in a foreign country, you flew. Nice. How many hours? 13? It was 
Well, I flew to Atlanta from DC, so okay. that was two hours and then 15. Yeah. 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 They come all the way this way to get treated the way it possibly like you probably should get treated. Right. right. And solo, because it's good to, I think everybody has their own perspective. I had no other influences that could have potentially leaned me any other way. Because who knows if I came with more people, they experience something and they go, man, I don't know about it. I didn't have yeah. that because I came alone. So it's yeah. like, from my own discernment, my own wisdom, my own perception, it's like, this is what I experienced, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't have no reason to, to hype it up because I don't get any, you yeah. know, I, I don't have any stock invested in it other than just being truthful man. It. and it's been great, you know? Um, every place has flaws like any way in the world, you know yeah. what I'm saying? If, if, if that's your justification for trying to say, no, don't go, you living in a fantasy world. Cause yeah. I live in America and there's plenty of problems for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, they're handing out problems. Right. There's a problem for you, yeah. there's a problem for you. Yeah, so that that that, that whole thing is, is out. Um, and it's just been good, like I said, for people who are part of the biggest influence on so far. Okay. I think, I think some people might take it offensively, but you know, obviously they call us African Americans. Mm -hmm. And we mostly focus on just being an American. And we don't really focus on that African part, right. but so what you're basically running into are just Africans, right? Exactly. These are just Africans, and, yeah. and 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 this is how they act. And you would think that we would act something very similar, or we would be like, oh, look at how they act and how they treat each other. Maybe we should do the same. But we we spend our time being Americans, and however. The other Americans treat other Americans. That's how we ultimately end up treating ourselves. Mm -hmm. But and then you come here and you get a quick lesson on how black people treat each other. You're right. right. Quick lesson. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know one thing I learned, and for the people who paid attention in class, you may already do this. Yeah. But I did. <laughs> Colonization, right? When I went to the museum, mm -hmm. uh, the apartheid museum. Yeah. You know, I thought Afrikaans was an African language. No way. Yeah, I, I mean, the, I mean, they sold the name, you know. To, and, and granted, like I said, I'm sure if in class they went, on, I didn't get get taught this. Yeah, but don't worry about it. You didn't miss it. Yeah, I was like, this is Dutch, German, and what's the other? It's, it's like three other yeah, languages. Yeah. Yeah. I said, oh, you even had the nerve to call it Afrikaans. <laughs> and then you know the struggle they had trying to assimilate to that language and make yeah, it seem like that they was less than. than. Yeah. And then trying to get Africans who already have seven eight different languages here right here in South Africa or more. Right. Try to force them to, to learn yeah, Africa. Exactly. Africa yeah. Oh, I can imagine. But just to try to force them to learn. That's the thing. It's, it's, like, like, it's like, like, hey, we made up a new language. We need to learn it. No, man, I'm good. I right. want to learn that. And yeah. then they force them to learn it. And then that's when, obviously, the uprising happened. I'm right. sure you saw all that in the museum as well. Absolutely, yeah. That's my birthday, by the way. Oh, um, yeah, June 16th. 16th. Oh, nice. I was, okay. well, okay. Youth day. It's youth day. <laughs> and I wasn't born in 76. I was born in 78. But at the same time, it's still my birthday. It's too much birthday, too. But it's neither here nor there. But okay. that's what caused the uprising. Them trying to force, force it. Yeah. yeah. And anybody, come on, man. But if we all were speaking English in America, then they just said, we're Spanish and it's how we can judge the curriculum. Or Mandarin. Yeah, Mandarin, <laughs> yeah. you know, or Mandarin. Arabic, whatever. It, yeah. it would be insane. It would be the same reaction. Exactly. So I found that, you know, interesting. Just the knowledge I got from going there and uh, Mandela's um, museum was, was, cool. was heavy. You know, There's a lot to take in, but it was necessary information for sure. Yeah. I like that you use the word heavy because I usually instruct people hey like just prepare mentally for what you're going to experience today it's going to be heavy if you need to grab breakfast or make sure you get a snack or lunch like because it it, it, it is draining yeah. um i've had a couple of people that have been to soweto and then had the apartheid museum following and couldn't get through the apartheid museum because it was too heavy it was like i can't take right. both days of all of yeah. this because it does do something to you yeah. And you do have to process it. And I know that you just went a couple of days ago because you haven't been here that long. But when you finally finish unpacking it, you're going to be like, that's a bull. Oh, yeah. That's how it was. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly yeah. how it was. Because it, it's, it's comparable, you know, 100%. to other, other struggles of us. 100%. Okay. So, so have, you, have you been to African American Museum yet in DC? Uh, I didn't go all the way through. But okay. Yeah, but that's what my thought was. But it's that's what I told my family. Yeah like that yeah and, and i tell people and i've been saying it a lot lately that that our struggles are very similar different time frames yeah. you know there you know there are those that want to compare and say well 
This wasn't the same, and that wasn't yeah. the same, and, and we're not talking about that. There are a lot of things that are comparable right, um, absolutely. In, in, in these struggles, and so I, and that's why sometimes I feel like South Africans and, 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 and Black Americans aren't that different. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, and that's true, because that, my mind instantly went to that museum, and that's what I used as a reference to my family to say, yeah, it was kind of like this. Mm -hmm. um, but it also gave me, you know, see that sense of pride, like we are going to fight this, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And we may not benefit, or I, I like to use the term, like they say, be the change you may not live to see. Mm -hmm. You know, they did do that, you know. Um, yeah. Probably Hector Peterson was the toughest part of learning about it, you know, mm -hmm. knowing that he was such a young kid and, and uh, lost his life. And then even the guy who, or the kid at the time, who, who had his body and he had to, you know, basically skip you know, leave his country, you know, and they yeah. still don't know if he's yeah. alive or not. So that was that was pretty telling. But um, you know, yeah, they yeah, South Africans love their country. Yeah. yeah. And they have their freedom fighters, like we yeah. had our we call we call them civil rights workers. Right. They had their freedom fighters, you know. Um I, I had somebody on the phone a long time ago ask me, see they said, um, so do they teach them black uh black history? And I said, What do you mean? And, you know, do they teach South Africans black history? And I said and, and I had to explain to this person that they have their own history right. to learn, right. you know, which so they can black keep, history. yeah, which is, which is, just, which is black history. Yeah, it's just just history. History. yeah, it's, yeah, it's basically what it is. And they couldn't understand because they, the person on the phone thought that they should be teaching them like American black history. And I'm like, well, they have their, their own thing. And, and I had to challenge them. I said, you don't know of any of the freedom fighters and any of their struggles, but you think that, you know, that but we that's should just the arrogance that. sometimes that what you ain't going to get. But we, but we, when I say the arrogance, it's the arrogance of being an American that's not really afforded to us, but we take it upon ourselves to have that arrogance. Because you're coming from a position where you think you're already at the top. Because they, they told you that you were. Yeah. They told you that, but they treat you like that. Right. And have you have you done enough research to break that thinking? Exactly. You know, because the, for me, the research had already been there. This trip just confirmed what mm -hmm. I didn't know from experience. You know, because I can talk to somebody who read papers on South Africa all day. Yeah. Right? Have you stepped on the soil? Yeah. Have you met the people? Have you interacted? Yeah. So this is really second hand you're talking. Mm -hmm. You know, so you making a whole judgment of the people based on something you read. What, what, what was the intentions when they were writing their history? You don't know. Yeah. You know, so that that's what it's been for me and that's what I think the biggest thing you all do is never like you're trying to you're not trying to force anybody to think anything. Mm -hmm. Just presenting something, mm -hmm. and then we get to do what we want. I'm sure you get videos or comments of people like, "Well, what about this?" It's like, "Oh yeah, the what?" Listen, are you gonna come and find out, or you just trying to convince them of something that they listen? listen. Yeah. You know listen. what I'm saying? If, so. if, if I get one more, but what about? Yeah. <laughs> if I get one more, but what about? I'm like, but they they always ask us questions like, "What about this? What about that?" and and the and the truth is, it's not that those things don't exist, but for what we do, I'm like, if you want to focus on poverty porn, then this is not the channel for you. Right. Because what I'm not going to do is expose my host country in a negative light. Right. It's not that it, that, that it doesn't have negative attributes, but, but that's not positive. But yeah. that's not what I'm here for. That's like, yeah. but think about people that. They're like, oh, I'm a positive thinker, only like good vibes. If someone tries to give you a negative vibe, what are you going to do? You're like, oh, uh, that's not right. what I do. Right. That's how I think about our channel. We're like good vibes only. Like, it's not you. that those things don't yeah. exist, but we try to repel that as much right. as we can. Yeah. So, but you can't. Oh, yeah. You can't. Yeah. In Tell me about how fast you booked the trip. I want y'all to know that. Sorry, I gotta apologize to Dr. You don't have to apologize. We, we worked that thing out. She handled it though. I only gave her a week notice. You know what I'm saying? Like for what, 14, 15 days? Gave her a week notice and well, 15, 15. 15. And I had a itinerary in what two days? It was the next day, maybe? No, the actually was that same night. Yeah, it was the same night. We did 24, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah, because at the time thing throws me off. Yeah, six hours ahead. Yeah, um, yeah, same day, um, and it was clear, it was concise, it was it was smooth, and every day has hit the mark. I didn't reject nothing. I know some people like Can you, you know. Only thing I think I add, added was the well watching. And Kate Child asked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not the right yeah thing, right. So, yeah. yeah, but outside of that, it was never anything that I came in open like 
I yeah. trust these people because of what I've seen. You know, there's there's nothing for me, reason, no reason for me to believe otherwise unless all these people on their channel are in on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> they're the biggest hoax in history. Right, biggest hoax in history. Yeah. But, you know, back to you all's point about, you know, the, the reasons on why not to come and stuff like that. To me, at the, at the end of the day, it's like, we know what America's going to say about America. Nobody's going to promote their sales negative. Like, why would America tell you there's other countries better than us that you should live in? Yeah. <laughs> why would they do that? That's not even reasonable, for, especially for a country like America. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I didn't want to go in, like I said, trying to convince you all to convince me of something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was just like, all right, cool. I, I got the sermon. I got knowledge. I, I yeah. do, the, do the research for myself and, and, and let me go see. And like I said, I was already high on it from what you showed, but experience has surpassed all of that and i think that echoes most people who visit here i mean they couldn't put in the words really what they truly have when they come inside but you know you know what's funny Natasha? he's 100 right because i think a lot of people i don't know how they perceive us from the other side of the camera because we're on this side of the camera and then we're here so we don't really know we just know what the, some of the conversations we have and you know, obviously, you was you was obviously easy to work with because you had an open mind. But a lot of people, um, they're going through something to have that conversation. And so we ultimately, I think about all those most of those people, and we 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 as we say here in South Africa, we sorted them out, and they come, you know, and they might be at seventy percent belief right. at this point, but they come. And by the time they on day three, day four, they turn it around the corner, right. they are they are over the top. Yeah. yeah. And they are literally <laughs> you know, exactly what you say. Yeah, they're they're over the top. So and we kind of know that when we're chatting with them. We like, okay, this is gonna happen. This is what's you know, and then now this whole new thing called South Africa is available to them. Yeah. In their mind, it's available from now, from this point. To the end of the time. But like, yeah. we're going to vacation next South Africa. Right. We're going to go back to South Africa. For sure. And that's what we call people repeat offenders because 10 days, 15 days, I don't care how long you stay, it's never going to like it's yeah. I believe. I believe. Never it be a year, you'd be like, ah, oh, dang, I got to mm-hmm. leave in a year. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I love your optimism that you're like, oh, I'll be back in March. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Right. It's, right. it's, it's, it's up to right. May. Right. You'll be like, right. Be like, I think I'm just gonna come spend the holiday. You can come here and and figure it out all on your own. Like, you don't have to have something to do every day because it's so much that you're gonna be able to find on your own. And mm-hmm. depending on the time of year that you come, you come back in November. It's the spring. Yeah. So you're here in yeah, April. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. It's terrible. So yeah. if you want a second so, summer, right? Yeah. You're just saying. So <laughs> so so, what did you see? And because I think Tasha was telling me that you, you, you felt like people needed to know something. Is there is there something people needed to know about your your trip here in South Africa? Well, yeah. If you if you let's just go the lazy route because I and I explain what I mean by it because I've been around now. Mm-hmm. If the la- the lazy route to me is if you want to go somewhere and just kind of be able to still feel like you're getting an American experience, you can get that here too. I mean, if you want to just go to the mall and, you know, hit stores and all that, they have it, you know, and yeah. I think as simple as that sounds to you all because you've been here, mm-hmm. I, I really think that the whole African continent is a Serengeti is really what's in people's minds. I think they just think it's a savannah open, yeah. maybe it's dirt roads here and there, yeah. but it's not really, it's not really that. So you have that, which is the beauty of it. That's an yeah, option to see and experience, which I did, um, but... I just think that people need to be able to form their own opinion about something as important as Africa, particularly yeah. South Africa. Because we know a lot of pride that other foreigners have is because they've been to their land or they've been to mm-hmm. their ancestors or relatives of one. So they yeah. have that confidence when you hear Chinese Americans talk about it or European yeah. Americans, South American, you know, from whatever country they're from. And as African Americans, we, we got to, what we think we know. And we're confident in that. It's mm-hmm. like, that's kind of wild to be confident in something you don't have an experience with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, to me say, oh, I know, I know you like like that. It's like, based on what? 
<laughs> or what other people told me. That would be crazy, that you know? Would... So that, that's that's the main thing I think people should come for to get that reality, but also just the things you're not going to experience in America. You want to see a lion in its true form, that zoo lion, no disrespect, it couldn't hang with them lions in the lion's bird, not even the safari, I ain't even been to Kruger, so yeah, I know. Yeah, Kruger, they did. Them lions are yeah, quite the with those. Because when I looked at those lions' paws at the lions, I said, like, it's bigger than my face. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, yeah. real giraffe, real right. I mean, white rhinos, when we know those are yeah. on the verge of extinction, yeah. extinction. we watching that in real time. And they're in their own space. Yeah. You know, they're not, yeah, it's not like a room this big, they just keep walking back and forth. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, seeing a leopard up close, yeah. ooh, like, yeah. that's crazy. Like, crazy good. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. things like that, just, you know, learn about the wildlife, learn about the city life. Um, I thought it was cool how much they used the like the mopeds or the scooters here to get around. Yeah, that, I thought that was cool because um, it's pretty efficient based on how the city is set up. You know, you can get places quicker. You know, depending on what, you, what, what type of work you do. Um, yeah, and uh, I guess the only thing was like seeing the steering wheel on the right side and then yeah, that's opposite side. <laughs> you know, it's, like it's, it's not opposite side. Right? Yeah, but it's, it's you know, I'm sure. You, after a while, you just drive it. You, you know what I'm saying? Just, like, you, you, just, yeah. you just drive it. I'm yeah. going to go back to the um, safari portion of saying the animals. Okay. Um, because a lot of people, a lot of black people, which mm -hmm. we know, are like, I don't want to see no animals. I don't want to oh, do that part. Cage and I don't want to be an open vehicle. And I don't want to do this. And I'm like, you have to experience it. Because you only go on using that based on what you think is going to happen. Or yeah. what you think you know. Like, even though I was open minded, it still was not. I, I couldn't have fathomed it was this level of like freedom. It's almost like, you know, I was just in the animal's neighborhood, if that makes sense. <laughs> and if I'm describing it in a way, it was like That's they were out there. You know, yeah. you're in the car and you just, you just like, man, these live. Yeah. You know, there's elephants right in front of you, you know, all types of elk and antelope and different yeah. things like and you know the guides were all the knowledgeable and amazing they tell you hey this is this this is this is crazy man. yeah like a zoo is just Look at uh, such a watered down version you gotta read about it right yeah. and i think that's why a lot of people may say that because they either have the zoo perspective or they watch some show on Animal Planet that's the 10 worst things that ever happened between humans and animals <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the attack shows yeah, and all yeah. that and it's like you know when you look at the numbers that don't happen often you right. know, so I already do that type of stuff, yeah. but and it's and it's a risk, you know. At the end of the day, you know, I know what I'm I'm trying to do and I'm trying to experience. You only live once, you know. I can only go to the club and bar so many times for it to be different, <laughs> you know. Um, but why not come to South Africa get that and then say let's go to see the safari? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, nice <laughs> too. Yeah, we right, because I've seen y'all channel that. That's probably the parts, the videos I've watched the most. Yeah. If you all been great. on the on the safaris, yeah. and the Bush one, I think, is the most recent one I saw yeah. before I got here. Mm -hmm. Because you all showed the room and uh, talked to the lady I was calling her Issa Ray. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 She did look like her. Yeah, she did. She did look yeah. like her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I thought that was cool. Yeah, so. Yeah. Back by popular demand, you requested it, and here it is. Here are the dates and all the information you're going to need is on the website. Go ahead and book now. It will be filling up fast because a lot of people want to come to South Africa and look at the real estate. Hey, Mark. Thanks so much for allowing me to be a part of this video, but I do want to ask you a question. Sure, go ahead. What do you love about what we do? Well, I just like the fact that we, you know, we show a lot of professionalism and I like being a professional. And the biggest thing is I like sharing what we find and what we do with everyone. I think that what you said is awesome. But what I love about what we do is that we actually take the time to build actual relationships. If you remember, we've talked about this a thousand times before. Yeah. And what makes South Africa so special and what we're able to do is that we actually actually take the time to build relationships. We don't just go meet someone and, you know, have a short conversation and think that they're going to work with us. We actually take time and invest our time and our abilities and making connections that are going to be lifelong that we can share with other individuals. Absolutely. And so that's why this real estate tour, I think, was so successful the first time. And of course, 
um, the second time around will be just as successful as not more successful um, than the first one. Now, the people that came, I mean, they uh, voiced to us many times, you know, wow, this this tour was amazing. It was great to be able to have access to the properties, being able to know how it works. And then, of course, having the professionals on hand to answer questions. And then, of course, after the tour was over, they still can contact them because they are constantly interested. And then, of course, several people bought homes. You know, I think the enthusiasm, not just of the people that came, they were enthusiastic before they got here because exactly. they understood that what we were doing was something that was revolutionary, that had never really been done before at this level, and that it did take a lot of work for us to be able to put this together. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like we put it together by the seat of our pants. We actually <laughs> took time to build these relationships, as I said earlier, to make sure that everyone in that room got exactly yeah. what they deserved and yeah. what they paid for. You know, we talk about the, con um, the construction people, the builders, the developers. To yeah. have all those people in one room at the same time was amazing and we love the fact that we have the support of Joburg Tourism understanding that investments are a part of what tourism brings to South Africa yeah just doing it from a professional um, um, environment really 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 helped and then of course those that were local people here in, in Johannesburg signed up to, to work with us so we can bring people this exclusive opportunity to come to South Africa walking inside these locations in these homes and get the offerings that South Africa has. And so we were really proud that everybody that came trusted us. Um, I think they all went back home super excited, super happy, and for the for the prospects of purchasing a home here in South Africa. If you did, and, and if they didn't purchase it now, they're gonna purchase it in the future and they have all the contacts to do so. I think that because they have the contacts to do so, the contacts are also enthusiastic about hearing from them as well. All right, it's always good for us to be able to come together and have the opportunity at this location. At, right here, they're at Serengeti, one of the estates here in South Africa, and this is the reception that they received at Serengeti. Um, very good situation. That brother right there is in the belly, brother. And uh, of course, we got our guests who are here with us in South Africa. You know, I love the fact that they took the time to not only partner with us in this, but believe in us and put together something at Serengeti that was all-encompassing of what Serengeti actually was able to offer because they were so steadfast in what they put together and believed in what we were trying to do as far as investing in South Africa mm -hmm. what they actually did was put everybody in situations where they have the ability to make lifelong friends meaning that they grouped everybody together yeah, they did become and, friends <laughs> and those people literally stuck together based on their configuration but yeah. the way Serengeti did that allowing everybody to get the same experience was what kind of made it a situation where everybody was able to yeah. bond even more. Because I think at this point, everybody's lifelong friends. They've, they've been chatting back and forth in the, in the private chats and whatnot. So it was great to see a bunch of African-Americans having the opportunity to do something like this here in Africa. Um, I'm going to say it's, it's, it's probably something that doesn't happen a lot, but it needs to happen more. And that's why we are doing another real estate tour, because I think the African American community community will be embraced like this company, like this whole group was. Um, you will be embraced as well, and then of course they got an opportunity to to do plenty more things here in South Africa outside of the real estate tour. So it really worked out well for them. Everybody's happy, and right now we have a couple people that I want you guys to meet. They're going to tell you a little bit about their experience here in South Africa with the real South Africa. So stay with us. Hello, my name is Toya. I'm from Los Angeles, California. Uh, we came today with the Blantons to take a look at this beautiful home here in Ser Serengeti. Um, I would say this home is a great use of space. The natural light is absolutely fabulous. Um, I love the courtyard style in the um, yard area. 
um, there are several bedrooms and a theater room it is absolutely gorgeous it definitely made me think about investing in this property hi my name is Spencer Willington I'm from Goodyear Arizona and I'm here on the real South Africa tour it is an amazing tour I'm having a great time I, I wish it was longer um, it's only I think it's eight or nine days but if you get an opportunity to maybe not come out to a real estate tour, but come to South Africa under the real South Africa. Again, Spencer Willington by way of Goodyear, Arizona. Thanks. Now that you guys have an idea of what we do and how we do our real estate tours, we are so professional. No one does it like we do. And those were just clips from people who came on the first one. So sign up for the second one now. All right, guys, take a look at our preview to our documentary. It's amazing. So check it out. And then once you've seen the preview, which is coming up next, you can go to our website and view it. Thank you. The Real South Africa is a travel and tourism company. Our overarching focus is to bring to the, to the African diaspora uh, what South Africa has to offer in the, the realms of tourism and the, op the option to see what's, a, what's available here in South Africa. And then of course, if you're looking at trying to relocate to South Africa, then um, we can assist you in those areas, areas as well. My husband, you know, um, named the company and it made sense simply because of what we're shown in the media when it comes to South Africa. We're never shown, you know, how beautiful the people are, how beautiful the, uh, the architecture, um, the fashion, the food. So for us, when we got to experience how people actually have real lifestyles and they love their families and they socialize, like that was more real to us than anything that we had ever been shown, you know, as far as the media is concerned on that side. What we were taught um, about South Africa, um, as a child, we always thought Tarzan, you know, which was ridiculous. Um, we thought, you know, that it was just a, it was like jungles and stuff to that effect. Uh, the only thing that you hear about South Africa is robberies, hijackings. In fact, I was told that if you get here, if you have a bag in the car, they're going to break your window and, and take it. South Africa is presented in a way that it's only shown for you coming here to serve others. You know, we see some of the films where the kids have flies on their eyes and, and they need our help and they're not a developed country and, and, it, and there's so many negative, um, it's dangerous. But when you get here, it, it contradicts everything that you have been told. All right, everyone, the real South Africa, we got packages, packages to Cape Town, Johannesburg, Durban, and other places. We would love for you guys to come and enjoy what South Africa has to offer. And of course, as your travel and tourism experts here in South Africa, we can make it all come true. Now, we all know you guys have dreams and aspirations of coming to Africa. A lot of us do, and of course we did too. And that's why we're based here in Johannesburg, the city of gold. A very awesome place and you're going to enjoy it once you get here as well what do you get when you get here well first of all when you land here in South Africa we take care of everything we make sure your accommodations are good we make sure your airport pickups are perfect there'll be somebody standing there with a sign we also make sure that the places that you're going to visit are carefully curated for you of course and then you got to eat so what do we do we put you in a perfect scenario regardless of what city you're in so you can actually have a great meal with friends and family or even if you come by yourself no problem we're going to take care of that too but isn't this amazing so this is what we can do for you so basically all you have to do is just reach out to us on our website therealsouthafrica.com and of course once you get here we got you now of course, South Africa offers spa treatments. They're absolutely amazing. And a lot of people just love it simply because they never thought they can get a spa treatment in Africa. And then of course, we always provide you guys with opportunities to see special animals out in their own environment and so forth. The only thing that you have to do at that point after you've been afraid from the, from the animals is to get on a plane, come here to South Africa, 
and enjoy yourself. So we will see you here in what we like to call sunny South Africa. Oh, and by the way, you'll get an opportunity to shop as well. So book your trip today. for spending time with us today. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the notifications button so you don't miss out on all things The Real South Africa. Thanks again.